Hey guys, welcome back. It's been very busy here, so I've hardly had any time to actually get out flying with my 250 size quadcopter. And in lieu of that, I've decided to build myself a micro quadcopter. This is a 105 size frame. Downloaded it from Thingiverse. Links in the description below. Going to combine it with a Ski Sky controller and receiver. I've got four brush motors here and some props and just a few bits of cables. Later on I'm going to add some FPV gear but at the moment I'm just doing kind of a part one where we're just going to do the initial build of the actual quadcopter and hopefully get into the air. So this is a Ski Sky controller, it's a NAS32 controller but it also features a DSM2 receiver that's all built in it's for brushed motors so it needs a specific type of motor and yeah it's ideal for very small quadcopters like this that I'm building so the basic premise here is we've got the frame which I've printed myself as I say it's downloaded from Thingiverse links below so if you've got a 3D printer you can fairly easily print this off I did have a little fun and games with adhesion but I'm sure if you're experienced with 3D printing you'll have no problems. So the actual motors they just solder onto pads. You can actually get connectors that you can solder in. In this instance I've decided not to. So this little connector I'm just going to trim it down a little bit because it's a bit long um, but that'll just be soldered in place. There's two little pads on the actual board the actual motors they come in two different types there is the counterclockwise and the clockwise and you can actually tell that depending on the color of the wire so here I'm just getting the helping hands in I'm just going to tin the the pads on the actual ski sky it's quite a fiddly operation it's it's an incredibly small board the actual board itself is only 20 mil wide and about 33 in length so as you can imagine that's that's pretty small okay so obviously I've sped this up a little bit where I'm just literally tinning the the pads as eight pads obviously positive and negative for each each motor so I've actually got the motors situated in the frame itself I've tinned I've tinned the pads on the ski sky I didn't actually tin the wires from each motor as it is just so small I decided that the, the tiny amount of solder that's on the pads that's that's enough but here I just trimmed down the wire on the end of my battery connector tinned them and then soldered them onto the ski sky itself so here I am just using 3M double sided tape the kind of foamy stuff And that's all that I'm doing to mount the actual controller into the frame itself. Just use the double sided tape. And here another fiddly job actually getting the motors soldered onto the controller. I know you can't see much here because obviously it's very small work. So we'll just do a bit of a jump cut. And it'll all be done. Okay, so we've actually got the components all soldered together. So we'll jump over to Clean Flight. Not actually shown here is um, an upgrade to the firmware. I did have quite a few issues with that. I followed the normal procedure for upgrading the firmware on the board, but unfortunately, it did manage to break the device. So I do have another video on that if you want to see how to resolve that or how I resolved it anyway. So once you connect it up, obviously the little picture will rotate as you move the model. First thing to do is jump onto the port setting you need to enable the serial RX this is the bit which actually enables the uh, receiver to talk to the NAS so that's on UART2 just flip the little slider over make it go green like this obviously I've actually done this already so that's why my settings were already set so once you've done that give it a save and reboot once you've connected back in, jump onto the configuration tab. 
here you need to set the motor stop to on you need to set the minimum and maximum throttle I've actually used 1200 and 1950 that's not the recommended number but due to my transmitter that's kind of what I ended up using ideally if you can get your transmitter to work properly they should be 1000 and 2000 so the receive mode is RX serial you also need to choose spectrum 1024 I also set the disarm motors as I do the arming via a switch give that a little save and reboot then we need to jump over to the CLI just a couple of settings to reset here you need to type set motor PWM rate equals 32,000 and once you've done that just hit save well type save and then hit enter again that will save and reboot the controller okay at this point you can actually bind your receiver to your transmitter depending on your actual transmitter the steps may vary I'm using a Spectrum DX6i all I need to do is boot the controller with the transmitter turned on and it automatically binds after a couple of seconds so jump back into the receiver tab you need to set the channel map to TAER1234 so that's as simple as just typing it in I don't believe that's actually in the drop down list give that a little save down in the bottom again then just make sure your channels actually match your transmitter so move move each stick one at a time and remember to check your, your switches as well I've only got two switches so being a DX6i I've only got six channels obviously the first four being roll pitch yaw and throttle that leaves me with two for my switches okay so happy with that now jump into the modes so I mentioned earlier that I do the arming virus switch so I've set my first switch to be used for arming all you do is you put the switch into the position that you want it to be when it's armed and then slide the sliders so the green bar covers the little notch from a second switch I've got it in horizon mode so by default it's in acro but if I want to perhaps give it to somebody else or or whatever I just flip it into horizon mode it's also useful just for that initial testing making sure it's working properly once you're done just give that a save and you're done hit disconnect and you're finished so there we have it this is the bare bones ready to fly I've obviously popped the props on so let's go and see if it actually flies I've just use an elastic band just to hold the battery underneath it's not elegant but it does the job this is literally just a, a test just to make sure it takes off and flies as we would expect or thereabouts so the battery I've got is a 500 milliamp hour obviously it's a single cell this one's rated at 25C there we have it I've just flown a little bit around the room nothing spectacular but that was just enough to kind of prove it it works doesn't immediately flip over or anything silly like that so yeah so coming up in part two we've actually got the FPV gear to go in so that's the transmitter voltage step up and a camera so I hope you enjoyed this don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss part two see you soon